So that negative 4 that we found to be that ratio for the last table of data uh, is a special number, and that number is called slope. So here's the big idea for rates of change. Now we know that linear data has a constant rate of change, and because that rate of change is constant, we give it a name, and it's called slopes. Now it's called slope. Slope, 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 slope. And here's the big deal. Only lines have slope. Okay, everything has a rate of change, but only lines have slopes. So never talk to me about the slope of a parabola because parabolas don't have slopes. All right, only lines have slopes. So slope is a specific word for the rate of change for a linear function. So we're going to call it slope now. Slope, 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 slope. Slope of a line. Slope. S-L-O-P-E. You've probably seen that word and heard that word so many times in this past like minute that it lost meaning. But slope is what we call that constant rate of change. Now we're going to talk specifically about slope for a while because this is probably the most important aspect of a linear function. It is the slope. Okay, now it's time to talk about the formal definition of slope and how to calculate it. Slope is a measurement of the steepness of a line, and it is defined as the change in y over the change in x. Now, it's the same definition as the rate of change, but remember, slope is specific for lines. And it also is the same as the change in the vertical over the change in the horizontal. And you will also hear it as the rise over the run. Now there are many ways to think of slope because as I said the slope is the most important aspect of a line. So there are a lot of different ways to think of it and a lot of different ways to remember it. It's a measurement of the steepness, change in y over change in x, change in vertical over change in horizontal, or the rise over the run. All right, And there are a lot of ways to calculate slope as well. Um, you can calculate slope using the bug arm technique that I showed you to determine if a table was linear. And there's also a formula which we're going to derive. As I said many times before, there are many ways to calculate slope. You can use the bug arms, you can use the definition as the change in y over the change in x, or you can come up with a formula, which is what I'm about to do. So we're going to derive, meaning come up with, the formula for slope. Now for some reason, mathematicians have picked the letter M to represent slope. And we know slope is the rise over the run, also known as the change in Y over the change in X. So I just have to find the difference in the Y values over the difference over the X values and divide. So that's what I'm going to do to derive the formula. So the way formulas work is you need to something to generalize. So in this case, any line, geometrically speaking, is defined by just two points. Okay. So this is point one, which we're going to give the ordered pair x1, comma, y1. Because I'm trying to derive a formula, I'm going to use variables. The subscript of one represents the first point. Okay. So then point two is going to be denoted x sub two, y sub two. And so I'm going to use the definition of, of slope now, the rise over the run, or change in y over change in x. And so that means I need to find the difference between uh, the two points vertically and horizontally. So what I have just drawn is I have drawn uh, how I would move from one point to the next point using a vertical and then a horizontal move. So the length of this line segment here represents the rise, and the length of this line segment here represents the run. So this here is my change in y, and this is my change in x going from one point to the next point. All right. So what I have to do now is figure out what is the rise in terms of these x1, y1, x2, y2. And what is the run in terms of x1, y1, x2, y2. So let's talk about the run first or the change in x. So if I go down here and I see what these two values are, this value here is x1 and this value here is x2. So what I want to know is the distance between x1 and x2. And the way to find the different distance between two numbers is to just subtract them. 
And I can do the same thing with the y values. This is y1 and this is y2. The difference between them is y2 minus y1. So then I'm going to replace these rise over run, change in y over change in x, with what they are in terms of the x's and the y's. So the y's are on top, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that right here is the formula for slope given two points. And this is one way to calculate slope. So we're going to find the slope of a line containing the points negative 1, 8 and 2, 4 using bug arms. Okay, so I'm just given two data points and I want to find the slope of the line. And I'm going to use specifically the bug arm technique. And the bug arm technique is dependent on me having a table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these two data points into the table, negative 1, 8 and then 2, 4. And so then I'm just going to draw my bug arms to figure out the change in y over the change in x. So going from 8 to 4 is a drop in 4, and going from negative 1 to 2 is an increase in 3. Drop in 4, verify, yes. Increase in 3, yes. So that means my slope is the change in y over the change in x, which is negative 4 over 3. And you can also write that with the negative sign out in front of the fraction, or you can write it in the denominator, doesn't matter. My slope is negative 4 thirds. One of the few formulas in Algebra 1 that you just have to plain memorize is the formula for slope. And so commit that formula to memory. Um, it is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so if I ask you to find the slope of a line uh, and I give you the two points and I say use the formula, that means I want you to use this formula. And so how do you use this formula? Well, first off, you got to pick a point that you want to be the first point and the point you want to be the second point. And so I'm going to pick this as first and that as second. So 3, 7, uh, that 3 is x sub 1, that 7 is y sub 1, that 6 is x sub 2, and that 9 is y sub 2. And when you're first starting off using the slope formula, uh, because this is one of the formulas you have to memorize, it's actually a good idea to write the formula down every time you calculate slope until it just gets stuck in your head. Because, no joke, you just have to memorize this formula. If you mess this formula up next year in geometry with Mr. Word, he is going to be very, very angry. So, now we have the formula, and I've figured out what I want to be x1, and what I want to be x2, and so on and so forth. Now it's just plug in the numbers and do some subtraction and some division. So y2 for me was 9, and y1 is 7. So it's y2 minus y1. And then x2 was 6, and x1 was 3. And so now I just have to do some subtraction. 9 minus 7 is 2, 6 minus 3 is 3. So therefore, my slope is 2 thirds. The slope triangle is a right triangle that you can use to calculate the slope of a line. And I showed it when I derived the slope formula. I drew uh, a little right triangle going from one point of the line to another point of the line. And that is an example of a slope triangle because the legs of this right triangle represent the um, change in the vertical and the change in the horizontal. So to use the slope triangle, I need to remember that it's the change in y over the change in x. And so then I just have to calculate the change in y over the change in x. Now you want to be very, 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 very careful when you have to find the slope from a graph. So first off, make sure you verify your scale. Okay, You just can't look at it and say, hey, that's two spaces, therefore the change in, in x is 2. You have to actually check to make sure that the scale um, you know, supports that. So this x value is 2, this x value is 4, so my change in x is just 2. This thing has a length of 2. And so then I have to go over here and find my change in y. This x value is 3, this x value is 5, so my change in y is 2. Now, I have to be super careful because this line does not have a slope of 1. The direction uh, uh, the line is going makes a huge difference in slope. 
and my slope triangle has to include direction. So I have to go from point one to point two uh, in a downward move, okay? Because I'm going from five to three, my change in y is actually not two, but negative two, because I went down two. And then I went over to the right, going from two to four is positive, so my change in x is positive, and therefore my slope is negative one. Now, the number one missed thing in slope is the sign, because people mess up negative signs all the time. And if you're given a graph, there's a really quick and easy way to determine if the slope is going to be positive or negative. See how this line is decreasing? Whenever I have a line that is decreasing or going down, that means I have a negative slope. If I have a line that's going upwards or increasing like this, that means I have a positive slope. So increasing means positive slope. Now when we were doing transformations of linear functions, we noticed that. Um, that's what happened with the lines. If they had a negative number multiplied by x, they, they were decreasing. And if they had a positive number multiplied by x, they were increasing. Well, that number that we multiplied by x was actually the slope. Now we've come to the second check for understanding. I want you to find the slopes of the lines that contain these points. So for A, 5, 12, negative 3, 6. And then for B, 7, negative 3, negative 2, 8. And you can use whatever method you want. If you'd like to graph it and draw a slope triangle to find the slope, feel free. If you want to use bug arms, you can use bug arms. Or you can use the slope formula. Just come with these slopes.